and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Bant Arcbo to start our Saturday stream today. We didn't get to Bant Arcbo last night because our three decks took a lot of time. Uh, they, we had some a, a lot of really good long close games, some good matches and everything like that. And uh, so we just didn't, we, we ran out of time. There we go. That's that's the way to say it. We ran out of time. So we're uh, playing Bant Arcbo today. As you can see here, this I am kind of changing the deck up by a lot, actually. What like I've played Ban Arcbo a ton, and what we've usually done with the deck is it's been built around Lyra Dawnbringer and Shalai Voice of Plenty. Uh, those two angels are were like the most important things to be getting in with uh, Vivian's Arcbo and everything. Um, however, I don't think either card is very well positioned right now especially if we're trying to have them as like soul threats kind of thing that we're like trying to use to stabilize or or kill our opponent there's a lot of very good removal to answer them uh that that m20 entered into the format you have stuff like noxious grasp and fry uh for example there but neither neither card is like particularly good against little teferi for example um like little teferi gets you know, bounces both of them, and you don't really get any value from them. And so instead, what we're doing here is we're focusing more on our flash aspect of the deck that we already had before with Thrilled Mystic, where we're uh, really focusing on Night Pack Ambusher. This is a card that I've been just so impressed with uh, playing this card. Um, so it, it gives us another card to be able to play with Thrilled Mystic, which is nice. Um, and it can go wide and, you know, help help you uh, stabilize also by, by going wide, by making wolves every single turn. The card that has been very, very good with Nightpack Ambusher, of course, is Tulsimer, Friend to Wolves. And so I got three copies of Tulsimer in here, even though Tulsimer is legendary. So as you can tell, like our top end, we're all about Nightpack Ambusher and Tulsimer and getting this combination in here. Because Tulsimer triggers whenever any wolf enters the battlefield. So each wolf that comes into play off of Nightpack Ambusher is going to trigger Tulsimer. You gain three life for each one, and then you, you may have that creature fight if you would like. So, um, you know, that, that, that's like a good amount of life gain to help stabilize. It lets you go wide um, and everything, and, you, and it gives you good removal if, they, if your opponent has flying creatures and, and so on. Um, so this is, a, this is a pretty nice combination. We've got two Spark Doubles, to be able to copy Ambusher or even copy Tulsimer. You know, if you have two Tulsimers in play, you get the two life gain triggers and two fight triggers for each wolf, which is pretty nice too. Risen Reef gives us that uh, card advantage. It's very good at doing that. And Deputy Detention is a pretty important card these days with Vampires and Scapeshift, both two of the most important, uh, biggest decks of the metagame. So we'll kind of see if this is like, two threat light as you've seen a lot of times i play ban arc bow i have just a ton of fours and five so like the arc bow uh won't miss very often maybe we'll miss more if we don't have that many fours and fives we'll kind of see like how the risen reefs do how they give us that card advantage we have more threes than what what i usually have by having the deputies and the risen reefs in here but this is our deck um i also cut cut a land from what we normally had and changed up the mana base where as you can see i it's very it's very light on the white now because we don't have any any double white spells. We're only playing just Deputy, Tulsimer, and then like Baffling End over here. Oh, I wanted to put a couple... I wanted to put two Devout Decree in here. Over two of the Baffling Ends. I thought I, I, thought I made that change. But yeah, I went to Devout Decree because this gets rid of Soren. also. Um... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna not play the Veil of Summer. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna play three Baffling and and uh, two Devout Decree. Okay, so let's give this a try. So we're playing in ranked. That's a, that's the R next to the deck deck name. We're playing this over in ranked. Four one prediction. That that would be very solid. I'll take a four one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Arc, I mean, uh, yeah, Arc Bowing Risen Reef. And the thing about like you know, putting more Risen Reefs into play, you don't have to, like, the, the cool thing that Risen Reef does with Arcbow is you don't have to put the land into play off of Risen Reef. You can put the land into your hand if you already have enough lands, and so that then you have, like, the land to ditch 
to Arcbow the next turn if you draw like a spell that you want to be playing. Um, so Risen Reef does work pretty well with Arcbow too. Um, as far as I know... No, nah, we're going to need another blue source and everything. As far as I know, the MCQ is next Saturday on Arena. Not today. If it's if it's today, that's a huge surprise because I didn't... <laughs> I would have missed it. So I, I believe it's a week from today. I need to update the deck list on Stream Decker to show the changes we just made. Throw in three Baffling End and get two Devout Decrees in here. Devout Decrees. Just didn't play anything, huh? I thought that's what they meant that they would have Champion Dusk over there. Yes, we'll take the trade. Good getting vampires off the battlefield. Yeah, probably gonna play Grixis Control next Saturday. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely considering Grixis Midrange in, instead. I'm not, not a hundred percent sure on, on what I'm playing yet. Um, yeah, could go with Grixis Midrange instead. Absolutely. Hmm. So, if I go Risen Reef, Risen Reef, we do refill our hand, but then we don't have, like, Frilled Mystic available. Or, you know, like, the ability to maybe hit Frilled Mystic. I think, I think we go Risen Reef, Risen Reef. Let's just... Let's just refill our hand. Let's... Take action on the, this land. Future lands I'll put in my hand. I already have, like, the Paradise Druid that I'm definitely going to ditch to the Arc Bow. So I already have, like, one card that's that's a definite discard here. Uh, Leafkin Druid's not, like, the worst discard, but it does trigger a Risen Reef twice. Hey, Matthew. I don't I don't know the exact time of the MCQ next Saturday, but I don't, e I don't even know, like, where the announcement is that says that it's next Saturday, honestly. I've just kind of been told that it's next Saturday. Um, all right, so Elf and Paradise Druids have two cards to ditch to Arcbow. It would be nice to play Tulsimer to fight this thing. But I also want to just actually... I, I want to hold up for Old Mystic and activate Arcbow. Like, I want to hold up for Old Mystic, so... Um, I could shock and go to 11 and then play Leafkin. That's fine. That's a good card. Oh, I should attack with Thrilled Mystic. 
No, because they just take it and then it makes their attacks better. Yeah, definitely want to counter that thing. Nice, doing a shrimp and crab boil tonight. I like it. It's a little unfortunate. That's a lot of... Let's see if you're worthy. The mysteries of life are endless. Um... a lot of mana towards arc bow i'm pretty sure we have we have this like pretty locked up though we just don't even need to attack we got six mana to either cast tulsimer or activate arc bow i have three three good cards to discard but, you know, like, we're going to be um, using Arc Bow to look for Night Pack Ambusher. Uh, that's fine. There's only one Frilled Mystic left, so it's not too likely that we actually hit Frilled Mystic. can still walk away. Hmm. We would have hit Frill Mystic. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Free life. And then end step, we put in a wolf, gain three life, fight. That is really nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I already like this deck. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty sweet there. All right, so we bring in Extra Deputy, the Devout Decrees, Baffling Ends. I don't know if, like, Tulsimer, or sorry, Tristani. I don't know if Tristani is something we really want against vampires. Yeah, so we wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't have cast a spell. So we just get that. The thing is, I, I have a lot of cards to bring in here, but I honestly just don't know what to take out. It's like, am I supposed to, like, Risen Reef and Frilled Mystic seem like the cards to take out, but that game, Risen Reef and Frilled Mystic were awesome. But I guess we were, like, already kind of stable, which is why Risen Reef was so good, but... I can definitely take out Paradise Druid. I guess I could take out Leafkin Druid... It slows us down, but then we just have all this two mana removal instead. I guess I could take out Leafkin Druid. Maybe one Spark Double. I don't know. I don't know if this is if this is good or not, or if I'm supposed to take out Frilled Mystic or Risen Reef, I don't know. Need some more, need some more practice. It's, it's one of those problems when you have too many cards you want to play. Ooh, Kiora can untap Arcbow. 
I don't think you need to do that, though, because... You normally want to just activate Arcbow once a turn. Okay. Alright, so we do have to find white mana. I wonder if I... Maybe I'm not supposed to cut Paradise Druid for white mana? No. We don't have, like, tons of white sources. So that I guess that is something that can be a little problematic here. Yeah, I used to play Lyra a lot in the deck, but I think that this card, Tulsimur, when compared with... I mean, this is a pretty decent card, but we need white mana. I think Tulsimur with paired with the Nightpack Ambusher is the better way to go. And there's just a lot of very efficient removal against Lyra right now. It certainly hurts Lyra. She's but a taste of my power. We need to draw white mana. Yeah, Cavalier Gales is is certainly good. With Arcbow. We could play Cavalier Gales. Stupid Soren. Welcome to the family. Well, I'm glad we got to counter that thing. All right, we're going to have white mana in here somewhere. Maybe this was a card I was supposed to take out, Vivian. Is kind. I want this right here. Maybe I need to keep Paradise Druid in here. I don't know. I felt we were a little unlucky. I feel like we are a little unlucky, but we could play Leafkin a couple Leaf... So I'm thinking Leafkin to be able to... I guess we are adding a whole bunch of white cards. So maybe one Paradise, one Leafkin instead of the Vivians there. see how see how slow we are see if this is too slow but we got white mana so we're gonna keep oh, I, we only do have one blue mana risky biscuits favorite deck in standard thanks for frisky biscuits <laughs> I 
All right, I'd love to draw a blue source now. Do have a lot of blue mana, but love to draw a blue land and be able to have four mana and just have these things available. Would love that. I'm going to Deputy the Knight of the Ebon Legion so that even if they kill the Deputy, the Knight of the Ebon Legion gets reset. I think that's the thing to do, overtaking a Danto Vanguard. Oh my gosh. Maybe I need to just play Paradise Druid, though. That's going to set us kind of far behind. Would have loved to have this last turn instead of instead of playing Arcbow. Would have loved to play Paradise Druid last turn. Mm. Sometimes it doesn't always work for us, though. I don't, I don't think there's anything I I don't think there's anything with the shuffler at all. I think the shuffler is good. Okay. Well, like, it's a good time to deputy the Knight of the Ebon Legions now. But then obviously we don't have Frilled Mystic Night Pack Ambusher up. We just drew the blue source. Uh, deputy last turn. Okay. So this plays it the safest. No. Yeah, I gotta do this. Cause like, let's say I hold these up and let's say they just go to attack. Like, what? What's my play? Like, what? Like ambusher block vanguard. Like, I don't even have like a good play. And then they have removal for Ambusher, and then I'm, like, dead. This, at least, they use the removal here. Not a bad draw. I don't I don't think we're gonna win this game. I'd be very surprised if we do. Vampires can get real aggressive. People always let you block and then do that. All right, so this is my this is my worry about the frilled mystics. They're only kind of good at like they're great after you stabilize, but if you if they just have you know really like good aggressive opener with knight of the you know knight vanguard like that, and then just a bunch of removal to back it up. These frilled mystics just don't do anything. Hmm. So if I would if I would just like, you know, keep in keep in the mana creatures, take out frilled mystics. I'm learning. I think so. Yeah. So basically, even on the play, just having turn three deputy and then turn four having like night pack ambusher or frilled mystic, that's just too slow against their deck. Like that's just too slow against vampires. Um, got to have more. Got to have stuff on turns one and two. 
you know, we didn't have any removal or mana creature or anything on turn one and two. Uh, Got to have those things. So I think I think Frilled Mystic is the cut for that matchup, playing that out there. And bring bring mana creatures back in, cut Frilled Mystics. Too slow. Good to know. Good to know. We're learning. Yes, Mystics are hard counters, yes. But whenever your opponent's playing one and two mana creatures that kill you really, really quickly, you can't really have four mana hard counter spell because you're already dead. Thought about running hard counters instead of... Well, yeah, Frilled Mystic is a whole lot better than just a regular counter spell. For that question. Yeah, Frilled Mystic is so much better. Than playing like a, a Sinister Sabotage or something. It's No, Frilled Mystics are awesome. Like this, this is a Frilled Mystic deck. Alright, so I want to start finding our wolves. Um, I could take another turn off next turn and play Risen Reef Leafkin Druid, and then I have lots and lots of mana to activate Arcbow the rest of the game. But I already have like six mana to start activating Arcbow. I think that the thing I do is I keep this on top and upkeep. Activate Arcbow for five, and at worst, we hit Risen Reef. Yeah, that's the problem. Omnath. That card's a huge problem. Alright, well, I don't even I don't even want this Risen Reef anymore. I knew I should have bottomed it. You know, should arc bow for three, and then leafkin. Like, why not just cast the risen reef? Why not just draw it and cast it? That's that's gonna be too slow though. We need Tulsimer. <clears throat> If I miss, though... It does look pretty bad for me. I don't think I want to shock. Well, that's a whole bunch of lands. Teamer has real removal instead of Bant. I don't think you understand what real removal is. I 
Red has like no removal for Adanto Vanguard, no removal for um, a bunch of zombie tokens. There is no re red removal spell that's better than Baffling End. Deputy Detention is, is the best out of all those removal spells as well, though. Real removal in red? The thing about Arcbow is you want to play creatures. Like Lava Coil is not a creature. All right, well, hopefully we find Ambushers and Tulsimers. That's exactly what we want in this matchup. And my opponent not draw multiple Omnaths. That'd be nice, too. And this is just for Omnath, Devout Decree... I think I, I kind of think I, maybe I don't want Deputy. Really, their, their decks, like our opponent's deck is only Risen Reef and Omnath. Like, those are the two cards we have to beat. Risen Reef and Omnath. Tulsmer does a good job against both of them. Is Baffling End even better than Deputy? I mean, it's it's better at taking, like, one Risen Reef, of course, like, like what we had that last game, but... I take out my Risen Reefs. I'm not sure. So, like, this is a good test here. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough card advantage for Arc Bow with taking out Risen Reef. You don't really need that much card advantage for Arc Bow, though. But the thing is, is you don't have tons of hits. And so, like, Risen Reef gets you a lot of cards. Yeah, it is a hard choice of, like, you know, Baffling End, Deputy exactly what we want to play here. All right, go get him, Ambusher. We do want to hit land drops because we want we want to be able to activate arc bow for more. I'm probably going to be discarding this this baffling end. I I'm not I'm assuming I'm not casting the baffling end.
because I, I don't want to cast stuff during my turn. It's a lot of damage. So we're attacking for 14 here. I was doing that first to see if we hit Tulsimer. You know, if I had Tulsimer, I'd just, you know, kill the Risen Reef first, but that'll do. My pack ambusher is sweet. Okay. Game three. Hey, 619. <laughs> so many puppers. All right, Frilled Mystic on the draw, definitely worse. Maybe let's go Deputy, Baffling End. I feel like I should play these Risen Reefs. What if we do this? What if we just kind of play three of each instead of instead of like four, and not play the Vivians? All right, awesome, Doctor Grindel. Sounds good. Any decks in mind for the Singleton event? Um, not really. I mean, I think just putting putting together. Uh, you know, basically with the Singleton event. You don't really need any, like, specific deck uh, kind of thing. Like, basically, everything everything can win. With with only playing one of each card, it's not like... You, you can't really, like, build around different cards because you only have one of it in your deck. So, like, the chances of drawing it is not very high for any, uh, any particular game. So, the thing to do with the Singleton event is just to... Um, you know, just kind of play good cards. You know, like you can you can build like ag an aggro deck. You know, you can go with some of the mono like mono red, mono white. You know, you can go aggro like that. You can go Boros, Rakdos, that kind of stuff. Or you can just kind of put together a a, a good a um a good pile of mid range cards. Um, you can go with uh, put on top decline. You know, and that could be. That could be like Orzov, um, Gruul. Uh, you, know, you can go like the different two color things. The there is a lot of from like the Singleton events in the past. There wasn't as many dual lands. There are a lot of dual lands now available with the gain life lands and the temples coming in with M twenty. So you really have the ability to uh, play three colors. Even though your mana is going to be kind of crappy, but you can, if you'd like. And so, like, maybe... As far as three colors go...
You know, like maybe going with Esper, because Esper has just, you know, all sorts of tools. So you just kind of like whatever cards you you like, whatever you have in your account, you can you can put it together, kind of thing. I think I can beat some different one ones. We do get some good chump blockers here. I don't think that's something to frilled mystic. I mean, I want to play the arc bow, but that means we don't get two wolves if I play the arc bow. I should probably get the wolves. Yeah, I could arc bow with Frilled Mystic up, but all right. Wolves are good. Wolves are good. So I think I saw a question earlier, what's the Jundus League? That's a, we're playing a Jund Super Friends deck. Lots of Planeswalkers. And everything there. Yeah, y'all are talking about Fire Emblem in here. I'm, I'm going to start playing Fire Emblem after I get done with... Oh, I need another land. After I get done with... Uh, Super Mario Odyssey, which I'm getting pretty close to finishing that game. Trying to get all 999 power moons. I'm at like 840 or something like that. 800 something. Do the John Planeswalkers work well together? Um, honestly, not exactly sure. We're going to kind of see. <laughs> Not exactly sure. So we'll go Frilled Mystic here. Next turn, Risen Reef, Leaf Kindred. But they have like Soren or something like that. Um, man, I want to block that Legion Lieutenant, but I can't. Lost of Vampires last time. We'll we have some good some good practice here. See if we can remedy that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight potential mana. I have to pay two life for the eighth. So if we've spent seven. Hmm. I'd have to pay eight to go Risen Reef and Leafkin Druid and Deputy. Let's start with Let's 
Risen Reef. Maybe we find an untapped land that doesn't shock us. That's not a bad card. So I could go Deputy plus... Deputy plus Llanowar Elf. And just play the Hallowed Fountain. So next turn, Arcbow plus Leafkin Druid, and then I have five mana to either play Ambusher or discard something to Arcbow. Yeah, Soren is definitely the card I'm the most scared of from our opponent, and that could mean they could, they could just play another Soren, or they could kill my deputy and get Soren back. But it's certainly the scariest card. Mostly because, like, just the sacrifice and deal three. We need to find Tulsimer, of course. Tulsimer is a card we need to find, but then obviously Soren can kill Tulsimer. I mean, I can block with Deputy, and they just get Sor so they get a, a Soren activation. They get another Soren activation, but then we don't have to worry about them killing Deputy later. I will block like this. Okay, just go double ambusher. No, I should I should have Arcbow in play. I guess I should have maybe I should have put that Temple Guard in my hand to discard next turn. Yeah, I probably should put that Temple Guard in my hand. Hmm. That's a killer. That really hurts. I wanted to block with those things. That really hurts. I'm I'm just dead now because I have to chump block with the ambusher or no I guess we don't have to chump block with the ambusher we can chump block with the other things to the two champion of dusks yeah the vampire deck's really good this deck's really good My best card in the matchup is still Tulsimer. We still haven't found Tulsimer in any of these games we've lost. The one game we, we did beat Vampires, we had Tulsimer.
blood really? is alive. Really? I'm at five. Soren card is pretty messed up. Well, that's why I put Devout Decrees in here is because of Soren. Is it possible that I'm overrating Deputy of Detention in this matchup? So we're talking about taking out Vivian. Deputy is really bad against Soren, being able to do three damage. No, shifting Ceratops does nothing here. Hmm. It's Deputy and Frilled Mystic are the ones I'm not so sure about. I am on the play, which makes Frilled Mystic better. Hmm. Play two of each. I don't, I don't know which one I want more. Shifting Ceratops is not a, a good body that forces a double block in this matchup. They we they just don't even have to block Shifting Ceratops. They can easily race it. They gain life and everything, and Shifting Ceratops doesn't kill them before before we can kill them or before they can kill us. It's not a good blocker. Not, nothing I I want at all. Generic 5-4 creature that does nothing else. By does nothing else, I mean gains no value in any way. Like, it doesn't have any kind of ETB effect or anything. Well, the game, the game, last match, the game that I did beat Vampires, Frilled Mystic was amazing because it countered multiple Champion of Dusks and a Soren with Frilled Mystics. Like Soren, or Frilled Mystic actually has that ability. Or Ceratops against, against those cards. You know, like thinking of Ceratops against Champion, it, it'll like trade body-wise, but Champion will draw them a whole bunch of cards. 
So Frilled Mystic does have that ability. Now it's the key of the course is not getting it too far behind first. I guess this just comes into play tapped anyway. We only have tap lands. Not looking good for us here. If they kill Deputy, that is. If they have removal for Deputy, not looking good. So, of course, it's lethal. We got a block. Do I activate Arc Bow? That block at least forces them to activate their knight to kill my Leafkin. Do I activate Arc Bow for two? I'd have six, oh gosh, five hits in the whole deck, and I only get a look at two cards. They're just not going to hit. Why did I have to play Vona? I just have one other deputy attention in my deck. I'm just so dead. Hey, we finally found a devout decree. Tristani. So thinking there, like, basically, obviously I'm in a terrible spot. Night, night pack Ambusher can't do anything against Vona. You know, like, we, we try playing Ambusher, they just kill it with Vona. I have to chomp here. I'm thinking, like, maybe we get lucky and hit the other deputy. Or if we hit if we hit a Night pack Ambusher, 
It's kind of the problem with having the ambushers in our hand. If we hit an ambusher, we get to make a wolf at end step, and like the wolf can chump block and stuff like that. Um, just really, really tough spot. Hey, what's up? Rain is hell. Thanks, Rain. Uh, or gift, getting that gifted sub from Samantha. Thank you, Samantha, and welcome to the channel, Rain. All right, so we're struggling against vampires. Vampires is a tough deck to beat. Hey, good job, Delotrius. Good job. I don't think we've drawn Baffling End or... I know we haven't drawn Devout Decree. I don't think we've drawn Baffling End either in any game. So we're not drawing our sideboard cards. But that's a tough one to beat. We had one game against them where we got to have Ambusher and... We got to have Am uh, Ambusher and Tulsimer. In fact, only one game where we even seen where we seen Tulsimer. That was the game we won. So it's not impossible, but it's it's tough. Actually, against Watery Grave, I I don't know. I was still just kind of talking. I didn't process like the land that they played. Yep. Okay, good. Not Thought Erasure. And say I should have just played Arcbow. Should have. Probably just got Arcbow in play because of Thought Erasure. I'm not going to play the Paradise Druid because I'm going to discard Paradise Druid. Hitting land drops is going to be more important than having, like, the Paradise Druid out here because Grixis deck, they're going to be playing, you know, your Cry of the Carnariums and all that kind of stuff to kill my creatures. All right, well, we're, we are just dead. <laughs> uh, Tulsmer can do stuff, I guess. It's two bodies. We got to draw our four drops. Yeah, I could I could go that way with the the sideboard. Could go with settles and time wipes and stuff like that. That would uh, certainly help. That that's that could be a way to beat vampires. So I decided to do that because not only Frilled Mystic or Nightpack Ambusher, like either one would have countered that, like with the Nightpack Ambusher pumping them. Well, after I said we're dead, we drew really well. We drew a Tulsimer and then drew an Arcbow that hit a Frilled Mystic. I mean, it doesn't get too much better than that for us. Settle too slow against Flash, even dangerous when it resolves. I'm not really worried about the, the Flash deck. Think about something for vampires. Um... We go for lethal. We get a look at six cards for an ambusher. We 
already know the bottom three cards aren't an ambusher, so there's 40. There's 43 cards. This is not a perfect. Not like a perfect chance, but we probably don't need to go for lethal, right? Like, if we whiff and, I don't know, they, they go like Chandra, Awaken Inferno, wipe my board. Could be bad. If you haven't heard of me, then get ready to meet my flames. Let's make some more room to fight in. All right, any two power creature will do. Uh, we would have hit the wolf last turn. So we would have had lethal if I would have gone for it, but still have lethal. That was about like their only sweeper was like Chandra, and you know we'd still be able to do that. So Yeah, it was lethal. Because, yeah, as you saw, we put them down to two. We had the two wolves. So amb Ambusher would have been lethal because it would have pumped up the two wolves. All right, so against control, let's bring in the Ceratops, the Vivians. Uh, we can cut these deputies. Yeah, like the deputies are just going to die. I don't love the Spark Double either. I guess we could play Devout Decree. We could. We don't really need to, though. We want to keep, you know, we want to just have lots of threats. Maybe we do over a Leafkin Druid. That's not a threat on its own. I guess Tristani's good. I don't know. I, I basically feel like the Devout Decrees will just get Thought Erasured away. I'm kind of off them. Like, before they actually play their threats. They'll just sit in our hand while, like, while they're killing all of our stuff. We're just going to be sitting with those Devout Decrees in hand. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, Tulsimer is not a wolf. Tulsimer doesn't get pumped. Good. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Good call. All right. Tulsimer is not a wolf. So do I play Druid next turn, or do I save Druid for after Risen Reef? Is the question. I'll play Druid. Hey, Aku. Yeah, I don't have any Veil of Summers in the sideboard. Um, it does hurt the... It does kind of hurt the vampire matchup. Veil of Summer is very good against vampires. Do I need to flash an ambusher here? Not really. Hmm. I guess it's good against. Alright, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. This is better against like Ritual of Soot. And Ambusher sh should just eat a removal spell, but you know maybe it's like a Bedevil type removal spell that then they don't get to kill Vi Vivian Reed because they're killing the Ambusher. Uh -huh. 
Well, Arcbow plus Champion of the Wilds or Big Vivian? Big Vivian's the better... It's the best card. Beasts are much more reliable than human. All things begin and end in nature. This gives me two threats, though. Dragon God is going to be kind of rough if they, like, go Dragon God, kill my Champion of the Wilds. Because I don't have any pressure for Dragon God. And I, I think it's, I think it would be even worse, though, if I just had Vivian Reed in play and Dragon God kills Vivian Reed. Then I'd be really in a rough spot, so I'll go this way, even though it would still be in a rough spot. Let's do this again. All right, good turn, good turn. But that's fine. Um, yeah, Dragon God would have been more rough for me there, but now you know we uh, we still have the empty battlefield and we had Frilled Mystic. So yeah, shocking in here so that we have X is 6 as far as this is concerned. Um, yeah. Alright, no Frill Mystic. So Tulsmer gives me two creatures. This starts getting more, like if I get Night Pack Ambusher, it just they just kill Night Pack Ambusher, right? So I might as well grab the two creatures. I want God once again. <laughs> Defiance has consequence. We're down to just two cards. We got three and got a good battlefield. I think our, our deck matches up pretty good against a control deck like that with having so many flash things. Like Fril Frilled Mystic and Nightpack Ambusher are just awesome against control, and so is Arcbow. Like all those cards are. Being able to just play at instant speed like that. Alright, so we're 2-2. Two and two. So we're X and Vampires. So far. Yep. Yeah, that that's what that was basically the plan was just activate Arcbow every turn. We had you know, we had all the yeah, like that's why I was fine with playing the land. We didn't even need to play Risen Reef or really even Tristani either. Temple of Scryumph. We'll see how we do against Feather. I could see my Feather matchup not being good. I just don't know. Ambusher 
doesn't match up well against Reckless Rage at all. So I could I could see this being rough. Um Let's deputy that thing. There's not there's not a Jundis card that's just kind of play on word of like the Justice League, but we're doing a, a Jund Planeswalker deck. That's our Jund Walkers. I'd rather that thing get Reckless Rage than Ambusher. I hope they don't have another Reckless Rage. They just have like a God's willing or something or you know like something like that. Okay, good, good. We hit Tulsimer. No Tulsimer. So all the deputy attention be able to jump block the 10th district legionnaire for this turn. We do have to be worried about having only like one color of blocker and God's willing making 10th district legionnaire, you know, like pro green, for example. And then me not being able to block it.
Well, they are down to 11. If we want to start attacking back. Something to think about. Hmm. Whatever we can find Tulsimer, that'd be like really nice. So we have three in the deck. Well, we activated Arc Bow for five earlier, so the bottom four. Yeah, the basically it's it's kinda God's willing is the real problem here. Like I want to activate Arc Bow on my turn here so that if we hit another ambusher we get multiple wolves. Um or you know if we hit Tulsimer, that's that's just the best. But if we if we don't hit Tulsimer and then if we just take like a night pack ambusher and then my opponent has God's willing for this tenth district legionnaire, we could just be dead. Well we would be dead. Oh, well we're gonna hit Tulsimer. Tulsimer Yeah. Tulsimer sweet. Because, of course, we didn't cast a spell, so we get another wolf with night pack ambusher at end step. So we gain three more life. Fight again. Yeah, that's such a sweet combo. Now, if we could only get those two in play against vampires, we did one out of four games, and we won that game, and we lost the other. Or one out of five games, we won that game, and we lost the other four games, and we couldn't find Tulsimer. It's like, do I need to have four Tulsimers in the deck? Maybe a fourth in the sideboard or something? You know, it is a legendary elf scout. This can kill, Vivian could kill Feather. All right, so if we play another deputy and all these things, we'll try that. Maybe we'll draw him, probably not. Spark doubles uh, make your, they're just really good with the wolves. You know, like they're a, a good hit with um, arc bow. You know, like if you have if you have a frilled mystic in play, you know you can hit it off of arc bow and counter something with frilled mystic. Um, but most of the time, you know, like you're gonna have like a, a night pack ambusher or a tulsimer encounter and, counter, and uh, sorry and uh, copying either of those cards, night pack ambusher or tulsimer. Copying either one is really nice. All right, so Danto Vanguard's kind of their worst card. I don't know if I want to waste a baffling end on a Danto Vanguard. It's, it's their worst one. <laughs> yeah, I want a baffling on that thing. But I should probably devout decree. Because it is red. 
Alright, get this scry one. Yeah, I'll scry. I'll keep that. Alright, so I'll play Deputy and, and Baffling End here. They got three cards left. We know one's a Reckless Rage. We're definitely going to Baffling End the Feather. So both the Feathers are just gone for good. They can't get them back. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and Deputy the, the Vanguard. Because, like, basically the Deputy is probably going to die with them having that Reckless Rage. And them getting back Vanguard is not anything special. But it does slow them down a little bit. Well, this can be trouble. A third feather. It does seem like my opponent doesn't have any protection spell. Which could be good. I need my opponent to tap out, though. I don't think my opponent's going to tap out, but I need them to. I need them to not kill this ambusher. Yeah, they're not tapping out. Let me untap, let me untap. Feather's just such a beating. Because, like, if I... If I, was, if I have an Ambusher in play, then this would make a 4-4. Four four, and then the 4-4 four four could fight Feather. a ton of cards. This is over. Yeah, Reckless Rage. Reckless Rage is definitely rough for me. You know, Ambusher doesn't... The thing is, obviously we, we don't have any this kind of mana, but if we would have the mana... The... If we can counter their spell, they don't get it back with Feather. But... I guess Vivian kills Feather. And having three Feathers, I am not... Not confident in beating that. And I could have my own... Uh, God's Willings, I suppose.
Okay. We'll see how this goes. Could go well. Could not go well. Who knows? I will say I liked it better when they did not have feather. Like that first game, the one whenever they had three feathers. I know I'm not getting a wolf by playing this. But I want to be activating Arc Bow the rest of the game now. We'll take one turn off. We're just going to be discarding these things. They're definitely just saving up for Feather plus Protection. Right? Like, that's it's the only way they keep a hand that they don't do anything on turn one, two, or three. That's, like, the only possible thing they could have. And so I just got to see if they tap out, then I activate Arc Bow. Please, no Reckless Rage. Bleh. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, cancel. I can do seven. Seven's more than six. So another ambusher or spark double would have pumped and you know made it five power, but that's nice with Frilled Mystic just making it so they don't they don't get that reckless rage back. All right, so that one's gone. Good start, good start. Yeah, Mirko made a. I called it uh, Esper Colorless. If you want to find it on the YouTube channel, there. Um, it wasn't like a. I guess. It, it wasn't like a real cheap artifacts deck, but it was a. Um, I made it a Mystic Forge deck. Mystic Forge control deck. And I called it Esper Colorless there. Played it maybe five days ago or so. Not too long ago. Hey, Chief. Oh, this, this is not even a good attack. They have Feather with the, the Pump. That's not a good attack. That was a bad attack. I should have just passed. That was a bad attack. Hmm. Well, we hit two good ones. Do I want to turn my ambusher into five power? But then they still keep getting this thing back, or just counter it so they don't get it back anymore? I guess counter it so they don't get it back anymore. The the big downside to doing it this way, though, is if they if they do have another one, and they kill my ambusher, then I don't have any ambushers left. Where like, if we go the other way, and they um. If we go the other way, then uh, I would still, like, if they had another one and my ambusher would die, we'd still have another ambusher that would make more 3-3s, three but 
Yeah, let's not let them draw more cards. Okay, so we're three and two. And defeated the the feather deck. Hey, scapegoat. Yeah, I miss playing modern sometimes too. I mean, it's magic. Magic's a lot of fun. But uh, I really like standard. Anyway, so yeah, talking about this deck. Um, this was definitely a fun one to play. I liked it. I, you know, Arkbo was awesome, of course. Ambusher, Tulsimer, um, you know, what, what the decks just built around. Those were really good. The Frilled Mystics were awesome, countering stuff. The deck felt definitely felt powerful. You know, it was consistent, pretty powerful too. Uh, I need to figure out the vampire matchup. You know, we went 0-2 against vampires. We went 3-0 against everything else. But we also... I don't think the vampire matchup is as bad. Like, I don't think that we're, like, we can't beat vampires or anything. We only drew Tuls... We only, like, drew Tulsmore one game against vampires. Whoops. And that game we won. All the other the other four games against vampires, we, we didn't find Tulsmore at all. We didn't draw any Baffling Ends or Devout Decrees against Vampires. Like, that's our, you know, our, our sideboard removal. We didn't draw any of these in, in any in any of the three sideboard games. Um, so, you know, I need, need to figure out, like, actually how good Deputy and how good Frill Mystic and how good Risen Reef. Like, I'm just not, I'm not sure with these three cards against Vampires. Uh, that's something we need to figure out. Uh, we could go with, you know, like... Um, could could go with more like sell the wreckage, time wipe, all all that kind of stuff. Also, um, yeah, Risen Reef was pretty good for us though because Risen Reef in this deck, it just while it is slow and you know it's just a one one right away, it it gives us like extra land drops and extra card advantage, which is really important for Vivian's Arcbow. Not only does it help us find Arcbow, but whenever you have an Arcbow in play, you want a lot of mana. You know, you want as much mana as possible whenever you activate Arcbow, of course, uh, to be able to dig as far as you can to be able to get the whatever card you really need. But then also, uh, with the trigger, if it's an extra land, you could put it into play, but you can also just put it into your hand, and then you have that extra extra land in your hand to discard to Arcbow as well. So the Risen Reefs worked out pretty well. The one game against Vampires that we won, we had early Risen Reefs that got us a lot of card advantage and hit us land drops, and our opponent had a slower hand, admittedly. And then we got to Frilled Mystic, um, some cha like they had turn five champion, turn six champion. We got to Frilled Mystic those and, and kind of set up and have Ambusher, Tulsimer take over. But yeah, it's a really nice combo with a Ambusher, Tulsimer. It's a, it's a really nice combo, fun one to play. We didn't play against any Scape Shift, so we didn't get to try out all these Crafty Cut Purses. Didn't play against any Scape Shift, but... I uh, gotta, gotta keep working on the Vampire matchup. Soren is... Soren is the, the toughest thing. Like, that card is really, really tough. Um, or if they just have Knight of the Ebon Legions and Adanto Vanguards and pump them and, you know, just have a fast start and then they just have a bunch of removal from my Ambushers. Um... And deputies, you know, like that's that's also hard to beat. And so that's why we need that's why we need to actually draw these things. I could play more devout decree because this is like my only good, real good answer to Soren. You know, maybe I. If if deputy actually isn't really that good in, in the matchup, I think I want to cut this deputy from from the sideboard and put another devout decree in. For vampires. That's probably something I'll just just do just to start with because we don't need like deputy is I was thinking deputy would be you know real good against vampires and scape shift of course it is good against scape shift but like we have all these crafty cut purses for scape shift so I want more of like these things against vampires there okay um, that's been Arcbow though definitely a fun one uh, and it looked pretty strong 
uh, with only just like the two losses to vampires, um, but looked pretty good in all the other matchups. And uh, yeah, we'll keep working on that vampire matchup. So there we go. If you're watching the video later on YouTube, though, hope you enjoyed it. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Um, but thanks for watching Bay and Arcbo, and I'll see you for the next video.